Good evening, everyone. I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince. Welcome to part two of my Halloween marathon on Mustang Prince Oro Reports. Now, tonight's Halloween blog is going to be a film that takes place in Paris. And now, I know what you guys might be saying. What could possibly be scary about the beautiful city of lights? Well, you guys could be correct, but not many people still remember that there are stories like The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo or The Phantom of the Opera. Speaking of which, I'm sure there are a few movie directors out there who want to make their own film stories about creatures that look fearful in appearances, but in reality, they have more humanity than anyone believes they do. And which film do I mean is should be the subject of tonight's blog? Well, let's get started and I'll tell you. Released in France on October 12, 2011, the movie is... A Monster in Paris. Now let's begin. The story is set in Paris, France, 1910. Emile, a shy movie projectionist, and Raoul, a colorful inventor, find themselves embarked on a hunt for a monster terrorizing citizens. They join forces with Lucille, the big-hearted star of the Rare Bird Cabaret, and a smart monkey to save the monster, who turns out to be an oversized but harmless flea from the city's ruthlessly ambitious police chief. So, what did I think of it? Well, I really gotta say that I'm impressed with this film, since I've been told by several people that this is one of the few foreign films that are actually good. So, what do I have to say in my Mustang notes? Well, <clears throat> well, the movie was, believe it or not, directed and written by Bebo Bergerson, who directed two other films, like The Road to El Dorado and Shark Tale. Now, this film is based on a story that Bergerson wrote, with some aspects that are very loosely based on Gaston Leroux's novel, The Phantom of the Opera. With a little bit of Beauty and the Beast vibe in it as well. He also dedicated this film to his father. Also, I gotta really say that the animation for Paris looks pretty good. Unlike in Gay Paris, where the hand-drawn animation looks almost like a French painting, the CG for this film almost looks like Paris the way, well, the way it was in the early 1900s. Like the water, the streets, the environment, even the nighttime lifestyle. Now, you guys aren't really going to believe this, but this film is, in a way, a musical. And a lot of the songs are sung by Vanessa Paradis. More on her later. But what do I think of each song? Well, for example... A Monster in Paris is a little haunting yet emotional song, portraying the creature's character, showing his view of what he's been through after being turned into a giant flea. La Seine and I is one of my favorite songs. Like The first time you hear it, it's in a slow, calm melody. But the second time it's sung, it's a bit faster and high tempo. Plus, it has great visuals and more lyrics to it. And the finale song, Just a Little Kiss, is a great song, because it's, like, so toe-tapping. Now it's time to move on to the characters of this film, and their voice actors. Now, let's begin with Lucille, who is voiced by Vanessa Paradis.
in both English and French. Now, I already talked about the songs that she sings in this film, which, with her, makes her sound like a complete angel. But I also like this character for her personality, which is a tad mix of Belle from Beauty and the Beast, and her cabaret dress makes me think of Christine from Phantom of the Opera. Plus, she is really, like, knows who is, like, not good for her and, and all that stuff as well. Next, we have our title character, Frank Kerr, who is voiced by Sean Lennon. The son of the late Beatle, John Lennon. Bet you didn't know that, did you? Anyway, <clears throat> Lennon also provides Frank Kerr's singing voice, and as all other dialogue consists of his beeps and chirps. Now... I like this character for because Frank Kerr, in my eyes, is like the most sympathized character. I mean, he's a, f a huge flea who has more humanity than anyone thinks about. And his dancing moves and guitar skills are absolutely outstanding, and his jumping is kind of cool to me. Next we have Raul, voiced by Adam Goldberg. This guy is my favorite character in the film, even if he's a bit of an idiot at times. It was said that in this film that he and Lucille have known each other since first grade. However, I like Raul for a few of his jokes, and his truck, which he calls Catherine's technology for that time period, is pretty interesting to me. Next up is Emile, who is voiced by Jay Harrington. Now, He's a shy man who runs the projectors at the cinema, and while he is best friends with Raoul, his personality is almost similar to Bernard from The Rescuers. But, still a great character nonetheless, though. The next character I want to talk about is Commissioner Victor Maynot, voiced by Danny Houston. This guy is like the kind of person who only thinks of himself and doesn't really care what the other people in Paris want. I mean, as the movie progresses, after finding out about Franker, he goes from obsession with killing him to complete insanity. Almost like Gaston from Beauty and the Beast, in a way. But he does make a really threatening villain. Someone who's like, will stop at nothing to be in the spotlight. Another character I want to talk about is Charles, who is an intelligent monkey who has no voice actor. In this film, he is responsible for the florist while the professor is away in New York. His use of flashcards when communicating almost makes me think of Bilbo from Pirates Band of Misfits. But he does his best to help out the main characters with protecting Frontier. The rest of the cast involves Bob Balaban, as Maynard's assistant, Inspector Pate,
Madeline Zima. Emma as as Emile's love interest, Maud. And Catherine O'Hara. As, uh, as Lucille's aunt, Madame, Colette, uh, Madame Carlotta, I mean. And now it's time to move on to my final words of this movie. Above all, A Monster in Paris is a great film to watch. The characters are unforgettable, the visuals and animation are great, and the songs are absolutely delightful to listen to. So I recommend this to anyone who likes films that take place in Paris, or any other films with a similar story. So, I give this film the highest rating of 100%. So, be sure to join me next time for my next blog on Mustang Prince Oral Reports, because if you thought that trolls were the only creatures to live underground, you'll see what comes up next. See you later, everyone. Mustang Power!